Hey, it's Chris. After playing around with macOS Sonoma for a couple weeks now, I can say it definitely feels more significant than I thought it was going to, not only because I'm genuinely enjoying using my Mac more, but also because I'm feeling genuinely more productive as well. So today I wanna to talk about Sonoma's features that will help you get more out of your Mac and how you can master those features as well. Let's start by talking about the new screensavers and wallpapers. There's a ton to choose from. You can see here's a category with a bunch of landscapes, here's cityscapes, Here's underwater, there's earth, or the ability to shuffle through all of the above. I know this might sound crazy because it's not a functional thing as much as it is an aesthetic thing, but the new slow-mo screensavers like this Sonoma one that I have playing right here that melt seamlessly into your desktop, they slowly become your desktop when you log in, they become my favorite new Mac OS feature by far. Because not only do they keep things really interesting and dynamic and alive versus the old fashioned way of doing things, but also I just love the variety. There's so much variety, it's ridiculous. Now, as you get to know this feature, if you haven't already, I definitely recommend checking out the continuous shuffle feature because that way you're always gonna have a fresh new visual available for you and on your screen. And it's a great way to reinvigorate your work setup and keep things feeling always fresh and never stale. Technically, when you think about it, as I activate this screensaver, you never know when you're gonna come back to your computer and on what frame this screensaver is gonna stop and melt into your desktop. So you have all these different frames, not just all these different wallpapers and screensavers. So you have tons and tons, hundreds or thousands of different frames that it could actually stop on. So there's more variety even than what you would think on the surface. Now, I know these are just screensavers and desktops, but I feel like what's really great here is that I get a mental lift or a mental boost every time I sit down and get to work. And that's a very welcome thing. Now, an interesting tip for you for this might be to use a different wallpaper or screensaver combination via shortcuts for your different focus modes or for different contexts. The other thing you can do is not just think about, well, what looks really cool, or what's visually interesting, but to actually think about how is this wallpaper and screensaver combination gonna mesh with my overall desk setup or office space setup. So for instance, I have some plants, some greenery on my desk and around my office, and if I pick this green redwoods aesthetic for my screensaver and my desktop, that really meshes in with my overall setup in a way that maybe the Utah landscape doesn't, unless I'm going for a certain kind of contrast. So you can really think about the moods or the seasons or the themes or the colors or the textures and how that mixes aesthetically with your overall setup. Let's talk about desktop widgets next. This is new in Sonoma. You can see I've got one, two, three, four, five set up in a row across the top of my laptop here. Now widgets coming to your desktop is admittedly a love it or hate it sort of thing. Some people aren't gonna wanna use this because they're gonna feel like it unnecessarily adds some clutter and they wanna keep things looking as minimal as possible. And I just wanna point out if you double click and hit add widgets, you'll get this widget gallery here where you can choose from, but I certainly get people wanting to keep things really minimal and uncluttered. But on the other hand, there is a lot of power here with these widgets and you can't deny that because it lets you keep important information and actions front and center. Important information and actions that otherwise might be out of sight, out of mind. But here, they're in sight, they're in mind. But in practice, I think widgets on your desktop work best with an external display hooked up, like a studio display like I've got in my office, because there I have so much more screen real estate, I can see a row of widgets across the top of my screen, for instance, which is kind of my preferred setup, without covering them up if I have a web browser open or an app open, for instance. Whereas on the laptop, those get covered up pretty easily, pretty quickly. I'm not gonna wanna use my web browser this small just so I can see some widgets, you know? So how much use you get out of these probably is gonna depend on what your actual setup is like. But yeah, for me, it is nice to be able to jump into a recent note or activate a particular playlist, you know, that I like to work to or see what's coming up on my calendar or reminders. But a tip for you is to consider not just putting up random widgets, you know, like weather or reminders, whatever you happen to run into and be like, oh yeah, that'd be cool to have, but to actually have a cohesive group of widgets that works together to support a particular project or action. So for instance, you could group your apps together around the purpose of creating content or having a content planning dashboard where you fine tuned and purpose built your widget experience around accomplishing something in particular. In this case, for me, it might be content planning, but for you, it might support whatever your work is. And as you can see, I like to use Stage Manager and I put some thought into this so that when I minimize stuff and they go over onto this shelf over on the left, 
I actually have this whole lane open so that none of my widgets are gonna be covered up. So I'm kind of using macOS's features together in a harmonious and thought out way. So macOS Sonoma definitely brings some productive enhancements. If you'd like to be even more productive within the Apple ecosystem, you can check out my course, Learning to Be Productive, which will help you get more done in less time within the Apple ecosystem. It's actually 30% off right now. If you go to the website using the link in the description, you'll get that 30% off discount and you'll also be able to see what other actual students have said about the course and see what it can do for your life. Now, one of my favorite features in macOS Sonoma is the ability to use websites like web apps. So with Safari open, you can go to file and then say add to doc and you'll be able to create a shortcut that lives down in your doc so you can quickly access a website without all the distractions. No browser menu or browser bar or browser buttons, just the stripped down experience of you and that particular website. And the benefit of adding a website as a dedicated icon down in your dock is number one, it's gonna be more minimal, just less visual clutter, that's great. But number two, there's gonna be less distractions because instead of being one among many tabs in a browser, it's just all there by itself and all of a sudden you're a little bit more focused and that counts for something. You've added some friction between you and surfing the web endlessly. Now the other cool thing about adding a web app to your dock is that it'll let you get notifications just like you can see here as a pseudo app, just like a normal app would be able to do. I'll also just add, if you have a subscription to any particular website, turning it into a web app that lives in your dock might be a good way to help you make sure you're maximizing the value that you're getting out of that particular subscription. So the first time you fire up Apple Notes in Sonoma, you're gonna see you've got the ability to add links between notes. Now I've talked about this a little bit in some of my iPad content, but basically what this lets you do is link text from one note to another note. It's linking between notes, kind of like you would between websites, but within your notes. So some ideas on how you could use this would be to create something like a personal wiki with all your information or knowledge. You could create one for your business, or you could do something like a recipe box, a recipe tracker, keep track of your recipes, a media tracker if you wanna keep track of things that you wanna watch or listen to or read. I really like the idea of using these linked notes as a brainstorming repository or a place where you put all your new ideas and keep track of them and link them together. Now one of the best new features in Sonoma and one that's really under the radar that you're not gonna hear a lot of people talking about is the new autocorrect with inline text predictions, which works amazing. So autocorrect is, autocorrect is just smarter now. Inline predictions is when you start typing, you can see I've got where the cursor is here, some light gray text that's after that. All I have to do to finish that out instead of typing it is hit the space bar and that will work to fill in not only the rest of a word but sometimes entire sentences which can really save you some time. The trick is though getting used to using it and not just going about your routine and typing stuff out all the way out without using this to finish stuff like you're used to. Now if you combine that with the new dictation feature and I can just hit the F5 button on here and I can turn on dictation and you'll see it starts to dictate what I'm talking about but I don't have to just say it for it to appear. I can actually type and dictate at the same time without having to reactivate dictation like you used to have to do. Now this is something that you can do on the iPhone already, on the iPad already, but it made its way to Mac OS. And when you combine that, the new autocorrect with the new inline text predictions with this enhanced dictation, I feel like it's so easy now to get the stuff out of your head and onto your screen. The only way to improve it would basically be some sort of thought to computer interface. So there you go, those are some of my favorite new features in macOS Sonoma, the ones that I feel like are really worth talking about and exploring and getting to know. So I hope that you do that. I hope this video was helpful for you. I also hope that you check out the course because I know a lot of you have been thinking about it but you haven't made the plunge yet. Go check out what other people have been saying about the course, get that 30% off. You never know how long that's gonna last. That's all linked up down in the description. Check out our newsletter. So many cool things. Hit the newsletter every Friday. Really a great way to stay informed if you're an Apple fan. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. There's some iPad excitement coming your way, I think, if the rumors are true, and I'm gonna be all over it. So get subscribed, and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.